45 men and women pursue an extraordinary dream. 22 countries, 19 months, a voyage around the world. Tall Ship Chronicles. Okay, I know this is going to sound totally outrageous, but I think I'm bored. It's lovely and all to arrive here in the Cook Island paradise of Rarotonga, but we've been submerged in lovely island paradises lately. There's nothing to do in Polynesia other than relax, and I feel if I were any more relaxed, I might just evaporate. I never thought I'd say this, but right about now, I'd like to enjoy the cultural oddity of a jam-packed shopping mall, or a deafening action movie, or even a desk full of stress. Even ship work has lost its excitement. I'm not getting an adrenaline buzz when I go aloft anymore. I mean, really, how far could I fall? I'm in a rut already. Left easy, open. Krista is about to have her world shaken up. Here in Rarotonga, she leaves Moises and the ship and goes home to an uncertain future. Watching the family members of my crewmates buzz around the dock depresses me. My folks were supposed to visit me here, but they had to cancel. You know, maybe I'm not bored. Maybe I'm homesick. Can I touch your hand? Jim just knowingly broke New Zealand law. Customs officials don't care that he hasn't seen his wife in five months. Until they lower a quarantine flag, contact is illegal. Who's got family here? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay. Oh, you look so good. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is too much. Seriously. This trip is full of goodbyes. Can't handle it. Too many goodbyes. We constantly meet people, foster relationships, and then say goodbye. Every goodbye is really cheering. Yeah. Jeannie's like a mess. I'm a mess. You've always been a mess. <laughs> so, I've got eight days, nine days. Is that the day we leave? No, I think the ship leaves uh, two days prior. But we'll see, anything can happen. It's so up in the air always when you're on a ship. You can never plan anything, God knows. If the ship could leave tomorrow, there could be a coup d'etat in Rarotonga and the ship's gone and there I am for eight days in Rarotonga by myself. You never know. You know? So, um, but yeah, I guess I prefer that you see me off at the airport. <laughs> That's the selfish route. Five months ago, Phil was a volunteer deckhand preparing to see us off at the Lunenburg dock. Then a week before we left, the captain offered him a berth to Tahiti. Then it was extended to Rarotonga. Now there's another extension. He's given me the option of, you know, staying till at least Fiji, or, you know, getting a job here. So if I get the job, I'm going to do it. So it's a little stability in my life, I guess. The job on the container ship dock behind us is not an idea that Phil came up with himself. The captain wants me to try to go as um, second mate in training because that's what they need, and I basically told them what I'll do whatever they need me to do. This is going to have to be like down another that much, you know? If what you need to do is hone up on your seamanship, you go to our second mate. And he couldn't get more tied up in this lifestyle if he wire spliced himself to it. It's a good skill to have, you know? Um, like their cable lifts and stuff, those are all wire spliced. That, I mean, I'm not sure of that, but I can see a couple wire splices just looking over now. So, you know, if those need to be replaced and no one knows how to do it, and I do, then it's good. 
in here, but you said you couldn't make it to the Cook Islands. I wasn't hoping my parents would come here just so they could help cure my boredom by playing with me. We're gonna go to the beach, we're gonna go check out the waterfall, we're gonna play a bit of golf, we're gonna do a lot of I wanted them to meet Lauren. Still do. So, Lauren and I are making a video postcard for them. I can drive! We did some watch juggling and got five days off in a row. That is the longest Lauren has ever had off in her year and a half of service. So check this out. To celebrate, we rented this car, we rented this apartment, and now I'm cooking a dinner that mom and dad, you would have been invited to if only you'd shown up. Folks, you would have loved it here in Rara. There's wildflowers, nine decent holes, Moped Red Bull, empty beaches, murky snorkeling, and lamb. So cheap, we eat it every day. Unless, of course, we eat chicken. It's everything that you need is right there on that plate. That is why I love you, baby. All right there. That's it. You're a pansy. You pansy with your flowers. Folks, there you go. That's us awesome. having fun. You could have been here if you wanted to be, but no, no. Getting your PhD was more important to you, Mom, and Dad, God only knows what you were doing. Anyways, bye. See what you missed. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Bye. Phil is prepping for the first job interview he's ever had. So what do you think of me, Lee? The Canadian high school class he dropped out of still hasn't even graduated. Pretty cool thing to do at your age. Is that good? It's not really a tuck-in shirt. You can do it, I guess. It's not like you're going for a 9 to 5 job. You're going at 10? Yeah. All right. Good luck, man. Hold out for more money than you could possibly think they'd even think about going for it. 50 cents. Yeah, they might bite for it. They might be desperate. You gotta get them when they're down. Is it just me, or is the captain more interested in planning Phil's life than Phil is? Write up a little resume. Maybe state yourself on a letter. Is this something you want to do? And, you know, squeaky wheel gets the grease. Got you here, didn't it? Yeah. All right. The captain's dealings with Phil are downright fatherly. So what modicum of class you can put up, put together. Full of tough love, backhanded compliments, and unsolicited advice. Well, you're gonna go make a very good impression with Tom, and then we're going to go to the office and we're gonna see what goes on. Now, you're not getting kicked off the ship. Don't get that, but this is an opportunity. If I were you, this is what I would wanna do. In fact, if I were me, this is what I'd wanna do. What the captain really wants is to enlighten Phil. What Phil wants is to finish the world voyage. So whenever the captain sets him up a hoop, he jumps through. So do you want to go and talk to these guys in the office? Is that all right? OK, let's go. Man, did Jim ever make us nervous. Being with him as he waited to see his wife was really stressful for us. <laughs> was stressful. You see, Chris has been ill, and Jim said if she wasn't great, he would go home with her. We don't want that. You do, Jim? Oh, great. On my days off, I avoid all ship-related activities. Not Andy. At age 16, he dropped out of school to go sailing full-time. Still a teenager, he is a high school graduate, but now he's licensed to captain a 100-ton ship. That's a big paddle. Not licensed to drive a car, though. In Polynesia, mana means to have a profound grasp on something you cannot buy. Andy has mana for sale. The captain of the double-hulled canoe he's been admiring is said to have mana for steering by the stars. Uh, we were away for three months. Not all of that was at sea, but uh, mm -hmm. right. it took us 14 days from Nukuhiva to uh, Hawaii. That's pretty good, though. And, um, no instruments, it's just all celestial navigation. Yeah, excellent. With the sextant or the traditional Polynesian? Just no sextant. Yeah? No instruments at all. Wow. No instruments for navigation. No compass, no charts, no weather faxes, 
They sailed the Vaca to Hawaii with only the stars as their map. Using the old traditional methods of navigation. Wow. Yeah, that's great. Wow. That's cool. What's that? I'm the, the second officer on the Hithin Castle. I'm in charge of all the charts and the GPS and all the radios oh, okay. and all that stuff, so I have a <laughs> special appreciation for doing all that without those. The original Vaca canoes had sails made of woven pandanus leaves, and they were big. So, the original, the thing, those days, they take 300 people on. The original was four times the size. This size. This one. Whoa. That's a big canoe. It is. Can we go ahead and I'll show you? Yeah, yeah. So when you're sailing, how do you have, you have watches and take turns? Yeah, you know, uh, six on, six off. Six on, six off, and yeah. just half and half, both minus the like yeah. the captain and the cook. To the same one person as the cook. No, you rotate. If you're a cook, you cook. That's that's your job. Right, you just, just do that. Okay, just same thing with us. Yeah. Two cooks. Two cooks, one fiasco. But that's another story. Let's talk about something more civilized than cooks. Kate! How's it going, Maria? Kate is unique on board. She didn't get out of school to go sailing. She's gone sailing to get into schools. All right, I'm gonna go uh, in search of the other books because I know that- A teacher by trade, Kate was on board the Picton Castle for its first world voyage. During that trip, she was inspired to create a nonprofit organization called Worldwise. I mean, we have over almost 600 boxes, right? And I think only... 600 boxes of school books to just give away. When I came on board for the, uh, the first world voyage, we brought a few bags of crayons and stickers and stuff to give to the students. And um, to, we thought we'd just give away as little gifts or any you know, fun things. And it was just not nearly enough. The need was unbelievable. Gosh, these are great. Rarotonga is where our ship is registered. Being extra generous here is a must. I mean, you get so much from the people when you come into these places and they open up their houses and, you know, and their schools and they let us come visit and it's just nice to give something back. It's a wonderful way to connect with people. It's different from uh, flying in on an airplane. When we left Lunenburg, the captain explained our involvement in the Worldwise project by saying that our ship makes donations to schools for one simple reason so that those schools will throw fun parties for us. All over Polynesia, partying means dancing. Seeing young girls wiggling so suggestively is odd to our Western eyes, but... Something like this? Yes. Yeah. Okay, and do this? Yes. And do the captain knows it's all in good, clean fun. Thank you, dear. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, look at that. My goodness, thank you, dear. This is wonderful. Isn't it a neat place? Oh, I mean, my gosh. We took one look at it and said, hmm, yeah. we've got to have the PC people here. Oh, and you're on the beach. It's just oh, yeah. Check it out. The beach is really nice. I've wanted to do this since i known him when he was about 19 years old. Jim was 19 at one time? Oh, he was 19 at one time. <laughs> And he was in the service, yeah. It was, it was a good trip. That's all my friends keep saying, you know. When are you going to come over? And they, they kind of, on one side, know that, that I need to do it. Yeah. So I'll probably regret it later. Yeah, he's, he's always said this is something he was going to do. Plastic cups or some glass glasses over there. Okay. We miss them. She definitely misses them. Yeah, we're always talking about them and... Very true. No. Holidays. Christmas was hard, I think. But. Christmas was very hard. Chris is supposed to fly to South Africa for her next visit with Jim. If she gets her way, though, the visit will be the other way around. I would have Jim come home, is what I would do. Is have him, you know, get some transportation and come home and see the grandchildren and the children. And, you know, and if he comes to the center of the country, then all the kids can go and see him. That would work out really well. Jim will see his wife again in nine months. But for Krista and Moises, this could be it. Forever. Who haven't I hugged? Me. <laughs> you haven't hugged me.
After being on land with his wife and daughter for two weeks, coming back to the uber world of the ship is gonna be tricky for Jim. Uh, shipping out all over again. Bringing all my stuff down, I'm always like going back to the dorm after summer vacation. Good to be back, but as soon as summer vacation lasted another two months. Yeah. to be able to hang up for the next, for the last sort of hour, filter through, see people off. And then uh, I'll be waving goodbye on the dock as it leaves. It's a good closure though to see the ship sail away almost. It's gonna certainly be painful, but it'll be good to see, see it go. But it's rough, that's for sure. Crazy. Mom said, it seems like you should have bought me something in Tahiti. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the inside story. Well, that's, you that's were, not you the were coming. I had to wait till you got here. I wanted to buy a string of perfect black pearls, but I wasn't sure yeah. they'd be your size. I know. <laughs> Tiny. Big, Dad. Big. Big as her size. Be like that. We're preparing to sail into what is for us uncharted waters. We're going to an island that has no beer store. Is there a beer canal? There is. Right. An amazing five cases of beer. Okay. It's just stopping till 45. <laughs> hey, do I get a hug too? Oh, Billy, of course you get a hug. Oh my God. You're dying a thousand deaths, and I'm all sweaty too. So much. Bummer, huh? Not only that, you're all weepy to food. My God. We do everything together. Dave, as soon as you guys are done, we're going to patch it back up again, okay? So let us know. It's all right. Okay, put it in gear. Yep. Okay, give me full pitch. Yeah. Tell him to go out. Keep going. Bye, Krista. Bye, Krista. Half left. Thank you very much for your help. See you next time. Stand by your sails. Stand by your sails. Let go of the tug. Let go the tug. Ease the sheet out. We gotta ease the spanker sheet. Come on, someone's on this. Set to gallons! Hey, by the way, Phil was offered a job in Rarotonga, but he gambled and turned it down. I ended up uh, um, checking out a fishing boat and they needed guys uh, because no one wanted to do the job because it sucked. But. Um, I ended up staying. Um, I don't know, it was just like I went with my gut. What Phil's gut is telling him is that if he continues to work hard and play the captain's game, he'll be asked to stay on for the entire trip. It's not a bad hunch. It's unofficial, but there definitely is a reward system in place on this ship. Kentucky is so far flung, it's beyond the reach of the internet. Sort of balancing on the edge of a razor blade right now. On top of that, I've never been here before. It's supposed to be really nice and supposed to be a lot of fun. 
We won't be on the information highway again for six weeks. At every single port we've been to, we've stayed longer than we planned. Bad weather here, though, is threatening to break that lucky streak. What we're going to do for the time being, for the moment, is stick with half on, half off until the weather gets settled and we see what's going on. In which case, that'll give everyone at least one day ashore. Hey, Macker. Oh, yeah. How you doing, well? Got it. Excellent. Mac and Moises <laughs> are going to New Zealand yeah, for a month. What Moises got is his legal permission slip from the captain. When Mac got his letter, he entertained himself by telling the captain that they had to leave because Moises is in the midst of a post-Krista emotional breakdown and the ship is just too painful for him right now. Then for good measure, he threw in that he personally needed emergency dental surgery. You, you made up a whole no, 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 I, fucking I didn't, story. I, I didn't make any crazy up. story, man. It's, <laughs> he was like, Mac told me this and I was like, what? That's not true. Mac made up the sob story because whenever anyone leaves the ship so they can live a more pleasurable lifestyle, the captain seems to take it personally. He was, he was trying to talk me out of it again. Like, you know, Palmerston is going to be really cool. It's going to be one, it's one of the uh, most remote islands. He probably, he probably wants us to see the things he, he saw when he did his first trip around the world. Or, you know, he wants us to have the same fun or see things as he, as he does. I don't know. But it's, now yeah, it's a vacation from our vacation. <laughs> and it's a vacation from Moises from having to answer the same repetitive questions over and over again, like, how is it without Krista? Do you miss her? Are you bored without her? Whose idea was this to have a, the visitor's tree? Yours? That's good. Where should I nail it? Pick a spot for me. Right there? Fair enough. To stave off my own snowballing boredom, Lauren has dragged me to this research center that raises turtles. And what kind of turtle is this? Green turtle. Green turtle. Yeah, they uh, Hey, little guy. Five days old now. Oh, really? That's all? Yeah. Really? Okay. Wow, that's cool. So you'll keep these for the next 14 months? 14 months, yeah. I, I swear that. Mac and Moises are so desperate to leave, they've charged onto the local tarmac, trying to force their way onto the day's last flight. I'm with Mac. You're not going on the plane, it's close. Oh, okay. So what's going on? Mac! Well, they've already boarded, eh? And they've done a weight sheet and everything, so, I don't know. Pretty hard, yeah, I mean, I bet. She's asking, she's asking. How long do you need Cash. Right. Okay. Yep, 308. Okay. 308? Yeah, 154 inch. Oh, right, each. Pay now? Yep, yes. Talk about flying by the seat of your pants. As Mac and Moises make their exit, I'm trying to get the skinny on our next destination, Palmerston Island. The couple who run this marine research center spent nine months there recently. About 50 people live on Palmerston, and they don't just behave like one big family, they are one big family. The place has been divided in three. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, this family just, you know, don't get on with the other one. It's violent. Oh, you know. Really? Didn't they burn down the school because they didn't like the school teacher? Yeah. That was one incident there. Yeah. Oh, well, because the teacher gave uh, one of the students uh, some homework and, and, you know, and the parent couldn't uh, help with it. So right. he, he, he didn't like the teacher for doing that, so he went and burned it down. Burn. You're going to create war there if you... If Brother against sister. You know, yeah. talk about politics. You know, you know there's going to be uprising. It. So it sounds like fun. It sounds like it's, new. It is. It's it is. such an interesting it island. Is. Yeah, you would, you would, and people. It's an interesting group of people. Yeah, fun. yeah. Are you taking we're bring, beer? Yeah, we're taking beer. We're taking bananas. We're taking a couch. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're yeah. taking the beer so we can give it to Bill Masters so he can sell it back to us. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. Bill beer? runs Palmerston's only business, the Yacht yeah. Club. I think he's very enterprising. Sounds well, he's the he's, like the he's the only body that you know that can there. that you know that, that has business sense. If there is violent fighting amongst the Masters family on Palmerston, our crew should fit right in. We've got our own high drama, just waiting to boil over. A man threatening a woman in that way. I find that pretty. 
I find it unbelievable to the situation that it's uh, tolerated. Here's the gossip du jour. We have two cooks on board the Picton Castle, and to say that they hate each other would be an understatement. Yesterday, their relationship went from hideous to worse, when both insisted it was their day off. Two cooks were in the boat to go ashore. The first mate was talking to Laurie, saying, why the hell are there two cooks in the boat? He wasn't being that uh, kind with his language. You're not supposed to talk to somebody when they're on helm. Kelly is a newbie sailing with us for just a month. When the yelling began in the skiff, she had a ringside seat. And then Billy said, well, it's not hard to figure out. We've got two cooks in one skiff. Somebody's got to cook. And then Lori got off. And, uh, and then De Billy called Dennis off. Both cooks then met with the captain and the mate. You'd think the story would end there, but oh no. The meeting with the captain was like, OK, let's work something out. You know, things got out of whack on the communication. Somebody thought something that didn't happen, but let's just see if we can make something work from here. They're both frustrated, both of the cooks. They're doing the hardest job on board. You know, no one envies what they do. Cooks kind of by nature are supposed to be kind of volatile, you know, but it's, um, it's not a good scene. Apparently, what happened is that Dennis threatened Lori with his pocket knife. Oh, he was like, don't you ever call me a bastard again, I'll slit your throat, bullshit. And I was like, oh, that's nice, that's really constructive. So I don't know what had transpired between them before then, but he's obviously very upset. And uh, he was, it was a threat and he was wrong. The thing that got the rumor mill flying was that Dennis was going around bragging to everybody that he put a knife to the throat of Lori. I hate to laugh, but. It's just an unbelievable kind of situation that you get one guy going around bragging to people that he, that he uh, put a knife to the throat of, uh, of uh, the person he works with, and literally bragging. I've known Dennis for a long time. I mean, I know that he's, he's basically he's good natured, and I, I really know that he'd never actually hurt someone. You haven't met our head cook yet because, <laughs> well, because he says that growing up in South Africa, he was a gun-firing freedom fighter, and now his image needs protecting. He won't even let the crew take his photograph. Just wait, though. He is itching to talk, and soon he will. Lori is so spooked by what happened that she's not speaking about it. Her reluctance is understandable, but it just leads to conjecture on our part. You know, you have uh, two cooks that don't get along for reasons that are probably more complex than I can sort out, whether it's professional rivalry, whether it's a gender thing, whether it's personalities, regardless of gender and other things. So I don't know. I think it's all of that. Uh, and uh, uh, It's not an easy thing to resolve for the, for the captain of the mate. Yeah, I've sort of given up on that, uh, that crowd there. Uh, we, this is our third or fourth uh, sit-down conversation about getting along and working together and at that point it became clear that uh, this was not going to occur so uh, we've just taken other steps that will be revealed in due course. Some of us don't understand why those steps aren't revealed immediately but we're 300 miles from the nearest airport and if a cook was fired now it would ruin our stop in Palmerston. I've got about 36 people on board. I'd like to send half of them ashore tonight if you can put them underneath a coconut tree somewhere, over. Uh, don't worry, I think we can uh, accommodate that, over. That Here voice on the radio uh, was Melbourne yeah. Masters. A bit windy, but um, I'm sure you'll uh, hold out there. Hey, Melbourne, how you doing, guys? Melbourne first hosted the captain here 25 years ago. Full pitch, 100%. Melbourne Masters. His idea of happiness is true communal living. Hello there, Melbourne. How you doing, man? Oh, You're fine, Pat. I knew her last time. <laughs> Welcome back. How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you.
Okay, you didn't get fat anywhere last time. What have you been doing? Oh, all these people are trying to keep me happy. That's right. How are you doing, man? <laughs> Ten case of Pacific Lager, five of Lime Red, five of Sprite. That's Bill Marsters. His idea of happiness is getting ahead in the world. No problem. While Bill asked us to bring him things that he can use to make money, everyone else wanted things to improve their quality of life. You drank all the beer, sorry. Oh, that's okay. Beer down here. Okay, boys, ready for this drink? It's fairly big. Yeah, it's a video inside too. The Mercer's family paid for all this stuff, and we shipped it here as a gesture of goodwill, with good reason. Over the next 12 days, the Marsters will feed our crew over 700 free meals. Billy wants the beer back. Is this like for, you know, the Yacht Club? We buy them from the Yacht Club? Uh, well, it's for the Yacht Club and it's for the, uh, you know, when we're doing yeah. the school, I need something for, you know, for appreciation. What school? The turtle farmers in Aitutaki told me it had been burned down. Whatever. They also told me I would live like a king if I scored a bed with Bill. So I forced myself on Bill, and now I'm headed toward the Yacht Club, where he encourages me to open an unlimited beer tap. Palmerston Island Yacht Club. Polynesian hospitality is barely being nibbled at by Western capitalism here at the Yacht Club, but that's enough to spark what could turn into a real bar fight. One ever-expanding family lives on this speck of sand. Today, we're helping Bill paint a freshly built school because the captain told us we wanted to. And it's fun. They like to gossip more than we do. And to make it all the more intriguing, us yachties are already at the center of a controversy. You know, news came from Melbourne that he's going to stop the yachties. If you get any yachties, he's going to stop it. I say, well, you can do whatever you want because he is one guy that is not cooperating with this building. Melbourne isn't cooperating because Bill has already been paid to paint the school by the Cook Islands government, and now he's using our volunteer help. Finally, some action! This place is great! The women do the cooking and the cleaning, the men do the men's stuff, and everyone bickers openly. And then, they get together every night for volleyball. Remember, they're not neighbors, they're family. All direct descendants of William Marsters. When it comes to their day-to-day -day living, they're a lot more like a big family, like sibling rivalry, and who's gonna be in control and in charge, and who's gonna get to boss who around. I'm staying at Bill's Yacht Club, and I must say, I love it. We've all noticed, though, that some of Bill's relatives don't. It's a customer, you know, take them in, feed them, and do their laundry, you know, by hand. And the Yacht Club sort of breaking that tradition, I think. I mean, my understanding is that that yacht club does not belong to anybody other than Bill. Um, but I don't know. I mean, that seems to be because nobody else cares a lick about it. You know, it's a way to manage tourisms and, and the yachts, but uh, they, they disagree on that. I just don't think they enjoy his businessman tactics when they're a community that normally is very giving and sharing with each other. That's the whole deal about this is to somewhere that the artists can, uh, you know, privacy. Here you have privacy. It's a paradise when your food just drops to the ground. Can you guys believe this breakfast we're having? Oh! I just want to say that Bill put me up, and did my laundry, and his mother fed me three huge meals a day, and it was all free. If Bill is a businessman, he's the worst one ever. He doesn't charge for anything but beer. We're not like that, though. We charge for stuff. This ship is from a different world, and the clothing and hardware we bring here from that world is not something the Picton Castle just gives away. Uh, how much is that? What's the name of that thing? Oh, yeah? There you go. Mm -hmm. Pringles. I like ladies, they're more flexible, you know? Yeah, flexible. And it makes you want to work faster. Yeah. <laughs>
I want to make it clear where we are right now. We are in a culture that loves to eat, and we're an 82-day swim from the nearest grocery store. Naturally enough, though, people still get food. There's a saying amongst the men in Palmerston, fish all day, drink all night. But when they feel like feeding us a massive breakfast of lobster, the saying becomes, fish all day, fish all night too. With the, uh, the light, you get the, uh, the crayfish uh, eye ref uh, reflection. You see a bright reddish color thing. That... Can we just reach down and grab them? Yep. Okay. Well, it's a good size, right size. Mm -hmm. There's no TV link to Palmerston, no radio, no need. The men here are all singers and strummers and drummers. And now, us PC men are getting in on the act. The ship is hosting a party next Saturday, and we have been asked by Melbourne to rub ourselves raw as entertainment. But don't be offended. The rubbing move is taken from the Maori war dance. The captain said any guy who volunteered to be in the Polynesian dance show could take time off watch for rehearsals. So let the rubbing begin. And where does she live? Over there? Anywhere. Or over there? Probably all over the world. Maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe. Are we going? We're all going different ways with the she lives okay. far away. Maybe it's easier for you to uh, marry me. Well. <laughs> <laughs> marry me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My friends in Newfoundland would do more than giggle if they caught me doing this. Derek, can you show these boys how he was making? <coughs> Be mine. Yeah. Turn around and yeah. Turn. Turn. Face them. Yeah. yeah. Be mine. Forevermore. What she said? Be mine. Forevermore. Down, down, camera. Down, camera. Rub it. If you think that's risque, wait till you see the costumes. I wonder will the calls of Rub It, Rub It still be going on oh, yes, while <laughs> during. Man, you want to have underwear too. You can catch a paper cut kind oh, of style. Oh, 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 oh. By now, many of the Picton Castle men are veteran skirt wearers. Not me. They're supposed to be uh, just almost as long as your knee, but I'm opting to go a little bit longer for decency's sake. <laughs> Out of shame and horror. <laughs> All the women are all upset about this dancing program. Hey, they had Get out dance. of town. Yeah, man. You're just it's trying to create the... dissension no, again. Just... You're no, trying to no, cause a racket, not aren't you? Not the case. Not the case. <laughs> I would never do that. No. Stir up the shit. No, no right. I don't believe for a second. Not, the not women are upset that there's a dance going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, huh? What they're upset about is they're going to have to do the dishes afterwards for cultural reasons. Cultural reasons? Ooh. It's culturally appropriate. I can't wait till Palmerston Day. You might have, you <laughs> we might all have. lounge around. Hey, fan the flies off me, will you? For God's sake. Yeah. The women here do fan the flies off you while you eat. And it's nice. After Pitcairn Island, we had a Pitcairn Day. And all day we did Pitcairn stuff. It's hard to get in close. So, if we have a Palmerston Day, sure, us men will have to do all the manual labor, but it'll be worth it because we'll be able to say things like, scrubbing toilets is women's work. I know some people were disappointed with the um, male and female roles that they play here. You know, it's not the way I would choose to live, but it's sort of what works for them. We cook the taro outside in an open fire. We talked one day about whether or not they were going to go to university, and this group of four girls, and they said, no, I don't think so. You know, what's the point? Why? Should I fill the jug? Yeah. You know, some people wanted to be able to talk to them about, you know, how they could change it, what their options were, and I think that's almost detrimental to hang a carrot in front of some people saying, you know, no, you really, really stick up for yourself, stick up for yourself. I can definitely understand, you know, having been on Palmer Street and 
seeing what life is like there. You didn't really need a university degree to uh, raise a kid. But at the same time, I think that seeing the women on the Picton Castle, you know, do what they do is very beneficial for them. Look, life here is so primal, the women are thrilled to be doing dishes. That's a primal. Yeah. Just breaking this scuttle. There's the one. That's the one. And while we're on the topic of gender differences, let's turn our thoughts to every man's fantasy image of Polynesia. Topless dancers in sassy grass skirts. <laughs> Take those heads off. Yeah, that's good. It's like backstage at La Caja Fall. <laughs> hey everybody, would you put your hands together for the for the brothers from Picton Castle? I said I was bored. Well, I'm not anymore. Thank you. All through French Polynesia, I was trying to be impressed by the sights and the sounds. In the Cook Islands, though, people made the impression. And it's impressed upon me what this trip is really all about. Look, Melbourne's here, so's Bill. It's all good, except we're leaving. Kakite, what's that? Kakite means uh, farewell or goodbye. Kakite? Yeah, cheers. Kakite. Okay. Kakite. <laughs> you have to finish school, you know. No, this is the for me to say Take care Man, this trip has a lot of goodbyes. We'll be back. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> this thing got to be private. <laughs> Across the sea. From here, we sail to an island even more remote, Puka Puka. It should be a great final adventure in the Cooks. But not for our Cooks. They're still at each other's throats. By the time Mac and Moises get back on board in Samoa, who knows what they will have missed? Well, actually, I know one thing they will have missed. My new favorite place in the world, Palmerston Island home of the Masters family. Three cheers to Picton Castle! Hip, hip, hip! Hip, hip, hip! Hip, hip, hip!
One cheer the captain down hip hip! Next time on Tall Ship Chronicles, the goodbyes continue. Thank you! Tattooing gets tribal. And our fresh water supply is in crisis. The only really frustrating part about it is that nobody knows what's going on because we haven't refused to address the issue. That's all next time on Tall Ship Chronicles. Thank you.